say that there are a lot of community organizers in here. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of leftists in here, new leftists, old leftists. Okay. And I want to make sure that people are, are conducting themselves in a successful way for movement building in general. I want this to be a viable, long-standing movement. And it's not just about Palestine either. Okay? That's precisely the same reason why, as someone who's been doing this for many, many years at this point, both my advocacy for Palestine, but just in general for overall progressive causes, I'm telling you not to yell at that person either, okay? Because then you're doing the same thing. You're like, oh, you're doing a, you're, you're doing a bad take, sweaty, and like yelling at that person and, and polarizing them against uh, myself or this community is also unproductive. So don't do that. Be as understanding as you possibly can, be as charitable as possible can, even when people are being uncharitable to you, okay? That's it. All I'm going to say is I hate left punching. Leftist virtue signaling and spiraling into purity seeking is directly antithetical to the viability of leftist movements. Now we're going to watch Second Thought talk about the real reason why the U.S. wants to ban TikTok. Because guess what? TikTok is still good, even if it does have these like weird purity spirals and baby leftists being like super aggro on things. Um, and I I've seen a lot of people come and go over the course of the past 10 plus years. Okay. A lot of overnight lefties, a lot of new baby lefties will be very um, are, are very hardened and they have a lot of edge to them. They don't have like, uh, they haven't taken like L's over and over again. They haven't fully like understood what it takes to like change people's minds and whatnot. Okay. And I've seen some of those guys go from being like hardline, hardcore supporters of like socialism to fucking right wing grifters as well over the course of years. Uh, the, the, yeah, the zealotry of the newly converted. Exactly. And you mean sensitive, not hardened. Yes, you're right. I should have said sensitive, maybe even a, a little hysterical from time to time. But overall, but overall, it is still objectively good. Why is it still objectively good? Because it still has a shit ton of pro-Palestinian sentiment when no such thing exists anywhere else. Okay. So let's watch this video from Second Thought now. Before we Friend start the, the video, I need to make a humble <clears throat> request. I don't have any sponsors left because I'm not willing to compromise my principles on the Palestine issue. AdSense revenue has also fallen off a cliff. Yeah, this is the same for me too, by the way. It's fucking bullshit. Oh, like TikTok is one of the only avenues where pro-Palestinian sentiment doesn't get you fucking shadow banned. This operation is officially losing money, and that's not sustainable. If you appreciate the work we're doing here and you're in a position to help, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Every patron, regardless of pledge amount, gets early access to every video, plus access to our patrons-only Discord. We've got everything from a book club, to educators ready to answer questions, to live Q&As with me every month. If you're able to chip in even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate your support. Hope you enjoy the episode. Yeah. This feels bright. Today we're talking about TikTok, the app that started out as people doing funny dances and evolved into one of the most important news sources in history. The app where you can get lost down a rabbit hole of boar running around set to nightcore, then get a 60 second masterclass in how the CIA works from a guy who doesn't say a single word. Why does the US government want to ban TikTok so badly? Let's find out. This is not an attempt to ban TikTok. It's an attempt to make TikTok better. Tick, tack, toe. A winner. A winner. You just know she practiced that in the mirror and was like, yeah, that's fire. Okay, cringe politicians aside, where to begin with this whole TikTok saga? I guess let's start with a quick rundown on recent events. 
And I want to give a disclaimer here right up front. Production for this episode started on March 15th, so I might have to add in an update at some point in the video. I'll let you know if that ends up happening. Anyway, over the last week, Congress advanced federal legislation to force ByteDance, TikTok's parent company, to sell its shares in the US version of the app. And if they don't comply, the app will be banned. Why? China. 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 What nation are you a citizen? Singapore. Are you a citizen of any other nation? No, Senator. Have you ever applied Classic. for Chinese citizenship? Senator, I serve my nation asked, in Singapore. I, no, I, I did not. Do you have a Singaporean passport? Yes, and I served my military for two, two and a half years in Singapore. Do you have any other, do you have any other passports from any other nation? No, Senator. Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Senator, I'm Singaporean, no. American politicians and the FBI have long claimed that TikTok constitutes a national security risk, that it's a Trojan horse for the Communist Party of China, basically saying that the CPC is using the app to spy on Americans. We'll get to the hypocrisy of that statement in a bit, but first, let's take a brief look at the history of this attempt to get rid of TikTok. Back in 2020, Trump made the first attempt to bonk the app by signing an executive order stating that TikTok would be banned in the US if it wasn't sold within 45 days. One White House official said at the time, quote, This 45-day delay will give Microsoft and other interested purchasers the time to deal with TikTok's owners that adequately addresses the national security concerns posed by the app. No such deals were struck, and after some negotiations, ByteDance agreed to partner with US software giant Oracle to protect US data. Which is more than a little ironic, because two years later, Oracle got slapped with a lawsuit for collecting and selling personal data on millions of people. That data included full names, addresses, location details, political views, and online activity. Seems like a bad company to partner with if we care about data privacy, right? In 2022, we saw the official launch of the $1.5 billion Project so you're mad that Hinkle talked to the Houthis because you only got a TikToker proving you were less relevant than Hinkle? Yes. Thank you. To the one Hinkle Dink fan Texas, in the chat. Referring to Oracle's Texas headquarters. TikTok began routing- Not because he's like a weirdo fucking right-wing grifter who assumes positions specifically because he thinks he can cut out an audience or anything like that. That's a funny narrative. I'm going to go with that. All its U.S. user data through Oracle's cloud service. <laughs> There's like eight Hinkle heads out there, <laughs> and we found one of them. At which point, Oracle supposedly vetted the app's algorithms and moderation tools to make sure there was no outside influence from the Chinese government. TikTok was fully compliant, having worked for over a year to partition its U.S. version backend and code for U.S. corporate approval. Despite the company jumping through all the hoops it was asked to, the Biden admin cranked up the pressure, banning TikTok from all federal U.S. devices in February 2023. The following month, TikTok CEO Sho Zi Chu was grilled by a panel of U.S. politicians in a hearing more than a little reminiscent of McCarthy-era con- Spicy purple, shut the fuck up, okay? Please, you're, you're missing the point. You're ridiculous. I mean, it's goofy as hell, but why not die on this hill? Say you'll switch to something and take the Zoomer W? No. I Have you not learned your lesson? You've been in here for 20 months. I am the most stubborn fucking piece of shit you've ever seen. Maybe outside of Norman, Norman Finkelstein, okay? No, I'm not going to fucking capitulate to, like, the 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 framework of, of Zoomers that don't fucking understand it. Uh, especially when I'm talking about like more efficient ways of boycotting that are targeted. If BDS tomorrow said no more fucking Diet Coke or no more Coke in general, then yes, I would drop it. Okay. That's it. But as, as long as it's like TikTok callouts, it's not going to happen. You need to understand something. Okay. I'm a very stubborn person. And that is in some ways, what makes me a little bit more honest than the average person in the political commentary field? I don't give a fuck if something that I am advocating for is going gonna, is gonna to piss people off or rub people the wrong way. I did this with the Hogwarts stuff too. And back then, everyone on Twitter was talking about how fucking transphobic I am and how I want to kill trans people because I said Hogwarts legacy is a dumb boycott it's not going to work. The game in and of itself is not even like directly related. The game itself is made by developers that are, some of the developers are trans that made the game. There's trans characters in the fucking game. The game is pro trans in general. And the average person doesn't make that same connection between Hogwarts and uh, JK Rowling. A much better, more efficient way of dealing with that would have been to play Hogwarts Legacy if you wanted to and raise funds for Trans Lifeline or something like that. 
Okay? That's what I wanted to do. Everybody yelled at me. I didn't fucking play the game regardless. I wasn't going to play it anyway. And it was pretty funny that the right wing did the exact same thing back then. Hassan is a slave to his audience. If I was a slave to my audience, I wouldn't have fucking spoken out about how silly this thing was. And I was vindicated, by the way. Did I stop defending trans people because a bunch of Twitter accounts were farming and said that I was uh, anti-trans? No, of course not. Just like I will not stop uh, defending Palestinian emancipation as I have for the past 10 fucking years just because, uh, just because some TikToker said that I'm actually uh, uh, fake and, uh, and a grifter and everyone is coming to terms with that. It's like, I'm sorry, but at a certain point I have to ask, what the fuck have you done? You know what I mean? There are, there are things like, what the fuck have you done? Okay. This community raised $1.3 million for all of the Palestinian charities before you even knew what the names of those fucking charities were. On October 8th, we were raising funds for Palestinian charities, PCRF, ANERA, MAP, Medical Aid for Palestine, Palestinian Red Crescent. You only learned about them a couple months ago. I was working with them before you even fucking knew about those charities. Shut the fuck up. Okay? God damn. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So no, I'm not going to fucking be like, oh, let me give, a, let me give the Zoomers a W. No, I'm going to be stubborn as fuck. I don't care. My way or the highway on this regard, okay? What if it's a daily volunteer for MAP? You never know. I'm just, I'm just talking about the broader TikTok momentum on this, on this stuff. Even though I still, I do still appreciate and I love how much people are riding for Palestine. Okay. What is this? I'm trans. If Austin can eat at Chick-fil-A, I can be a witch. Fuck leftist Twitter. <laughs> That's... I doubt that girl on TikTok didn't support Palestine until October. No, I'm not talking about her. I'm not talking about her. I'm not talking about her. I'm sure she was. Even though, given what I suspect her age is, okay, I assume she's young. She's on TikTok. You know, when she was probably six to eight years old, I was still fucking advocating for professionally and openly advocating for Palestinian emancipation. Okay, that's my point. My point is, you know, I've, I've it's ridiculous to fucking consider me uh, uh, fraudulent in this regard. Ugh. Anyway. One of the first things Chomsky and others are clear to express is make sure that you, that what you are doing is ultimately helpful to the people you're trying to help rather than harm their cause. Exactly. Communist witch hunts. Chu came prepared with relevant data, including the correct assessment that US software has a clear track record of abusing user privacy while TikTok does not. But that sort of thing doesn't really matter when the panel isn't actually there to collect information. As TikTok spokesperson Brooke Obervetter reported to US media after the event, quote, the day was dominated by political grandstanding that failed to acknowledge the real solutions already underway. Two months later, in May 2023, we began to see the first state-level TikTok bans, with some more extreme than others. The state of Montana was on course to ban the app entirely, threatening ISPs with a $10,000 per day per violation fine for allowing the app to be downloaded. This law was set- <laughs> You are a Zionist stooge who attacks anti-imperialism while we're wearing a dress. Yes, bro, I got it. You're a fucking beacon of masculinity because you're terrified of a dude who's not afraid of just wearing a dress or painting his fucking fingernails, okay? While fucking your mom. I got it. You attack Finkel and Fed Jack and him. You're a Zionist dude who attacks anti-imperialism while wearing a dress. Chat, roll that fucking fin- Roll that- Roll that, uh, Hinkle Dink. Roll that Hinkle Dink fucking clip of him riding Netanyahu from, like, last year. Let's find it. Oh, 
Oh fuck, the account has been uh, that account has been suspended. God damn it. He's over here talking about like the the wonderful relationship that Netanyahu has with Vladimir Putin. Perfectly fine with him back then. When he's uh, perfectly fine with him back then, you are deliberately and autistically misunderstanding him because you have nothing on him. Yeah, autistically misunderstanding him because I have nothing on him. The only thing I have on him is that he is a fucking fan, okay? He's a fan who switched teams. Good working relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. Vladimir Putin has a very good working relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm actually happier that for the sake of, you know, the multipolar world order, that he is in power right now pre compared to the previous coalition in Israel. Xi Jinping of the Communist Party. <laughs> he's, he's happy that Netanyahu is in power as opposed to the previous coalition, dude. It's great because it's multipolar world stuff. Of China has a good working relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu, better than the previous coalition. There's the difference, okay? I acknowledge that Benjamin Netanyahu had a working relationship with Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin and routinely talk about it and routinely criticize it. I don't think that it's a good thing, okay? You, on the other hand, only care about the aesthetics. So you're just a dumb fuck with right-wing beliefs who thinks, like, liberals are cringe because they are. That's fine. We agree on that. But you have no problem, like, adopting the aesthetics of what you think is, like, communist anti-imperialism while simultaneously fucking sitting around and being like, yeah, I, you know, these guys are great. These guys are fine when they're doing multipolarity. Um, you know who else says? Yes, I'm a CCP shill. Exactly. Not a fucking Russia shill. Get it right. It's a good working relation. You know who? What do you think in 2022? Netanyahu was a good guy because he had a good working relationship. He had a good fucking working relationship with, uh, what do you call it? He had a good working relationship with Benjamin Netanyahu. So it was good. That was that good back then. 2022 was a good year for Palestinians under Netanyahu's watch. Shut the fuck up, go into dumb fuck. January 1st, 2024, but it got shot down in federal court in November of 2023. And that just about brings us... Hamas says the same. Yeah, okay. He's saying that because Netanyahu will take down the government faster. Hamas says the same thing. Okay, dude. Yeah, totally. That's what he meant. ...us to today. On Wednesday, March 13th, the House passed a bill that... It's weird that he didn't say that, though, in that clip. He only, he actually, as a matter of fact, said, uh, no, it's great for multipolarity, that ben Benjamin Netanyahu is better for multipolarity. Will force TikTok to sell to U.S. buyers within 165 days. It wasn't particularly close, either, with 352 voting for the ban and just 65 against. What makes this bill particularly interesting is the speed with which it was discussed and sent to a vote. From introduction to floor vote took just four days. Funny how politicians will ban the world's most popular app in under a week, but won't give the American people affordable health care, or do anything about school shootings, or skyrocketing housing costs, or reproductive rights, or climate change, or the ongoing genocide in which they are complicit. Anyway, Biden has said he'll sign the bill if it passes in the Senate. So there we go, you're all caught up. The question now is, why? Why is the U.S. government so adamant about banning TikTok? Bro, you're still you're you're still a dumbass. The the chatter, your chatter, who's like still talking about uh, Netanyahu's bringing about the death and destruction of Israel, which is good for multipolarity. That's not the reason why fucking Xi is uh, is collaborating with him, dumb fuck. Xi Jinping <coughs> is purchasing weapons and surveillance technology. That's why he's collaborating with him, not because he's thinking, ooh. This is great. Netanyahu is going to accelerate the demise of Israel. Fuck you. Okay? You're stupid. That's my point. You're Be smart. Okay? Be smart. There's a place for learning. You can learn new things here. Okay? Same goes for fucking Vladimir Putin. Fuck. They use the China excuse, but China has never threatened us. If anything, we're economically dependent on China for the cheap goods that poorly paid Americans couldn't afford to buy otherwise. Not to mention the fact that if our government actually cared about data privacy, they'd crack down on Facebook, or Oracle, or Google, or any number of other US corporations that do the same exact thing they're accusing TikTok of doing. 
It should be clear to anyone paying attention that this was never about data security. So what is it about? Well, China was buying American arms that were shipped over to Israel uh, for a very long time. Well, You're wrong things. for saying that that's Let's not the case. Let's start with one that would be funny I gotta if it weren't so scary. Those kids and their dang iPhones. What? Foreign adversary control of what is becoming the dominant news platform for Americans under 30. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. I urge my colleagues to support this critical bipartisan legislation. The dominant news platform for Americans under 30. Let's unpack that. The United States relies on propaganda, like any other country, to ensure that its people are getting the information the ruling class wants them to get. In capitalist countries like the US, that propaganda is bought by lobbying groups and powerful corporations, laundered through corrupt politicians, and dutifully repeated on the corporate media and Silicon Valley social media apps. What does it mean for the status quo if the majority of Americans, and more critically, young Americans, entire generations of youth, are not getting their news from state-approved sources? That's a one-way ticket to unrest, to people getting fed up with how bad things have gotten, to protests and marches that the U.S. would rather not have to suppress. When the U.S. ruling class sees an app that is not owned by U.S. oligarchs and tech bros, it immediately becomes a threat because they can't curate the feeds. They can't tweak the algorithm to prefer State Department talking points. There's a reason Lenin said, give me just one generation of youth and I'll transform the whole world. Revolutionaries recognize that the youth are the future, and the best way to either enforce or break the status quo is to win the hearts and minds of the next generation. Lenin. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the most vocal supporters of Palestinian liberation are young people. They don't get fed pro-Israel propaganda on cable news, or Facebook, or in the New York Times. I made a video about the US media's complicity in the genocide a couple weeks ago. You can check that out if you'd like to see exactly how this consent manufacturing works. The bottom line in the media Remember when Shagot Magazine called NPR state-sponsored media? Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, it is. The yeah, aspect of all this is that TikTok is the only widely used media platform that is not directly beholden to the U.S. ruling class. In order to maintain the deeply inhumane and worsening status quo, the U.S. regime must control every single aspect of what Americans consider news. But going back to the young people marching for change, that brings us to the second big reason the U.S. is so eager to ban TikTok. It's becoming inconvenient for the foreign government that actually is meddling in U.S. affairs. Israel. Remember Mike Gallagher, that guy you saw a couple minutes ago? The one complaining that the kids aren't consuming U.S. propaganda? Would you like to venture a guess who his biggest contributors are? In the 2022 cycle, it was AIPAC, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, a rabidly pro-Israel and incredibly powerful lobbying group that, coincidentally, also heavily funds Joe Biden, the man who, for some reason, can't bring himself to stop sending weapons to the rogue state committing the most obvious genocide in modern history. And it's not just these two. Almost every single U.S. politician has accepted money from the Israel lobby. Yep. APAC Political Action Committee, APAC PAC, filed something called a statement of organization with the FEC just in time for the 2022 election cycle, where it spent $50 million, including both direct contributions to candidates and outside spending, like TV advertisements. According to APEC, it donated money to 365 candidates from both parties, including every single member of both Democratic and Republican leadership in Congress. We'll get back to the Israel lobby in a sec, but I also want to highlight that Gal- Haven't we always said it was smart for China to ban Facebook? Why is it an equally smart uh, thing that we have to do the same thing for TikTok? Because, okay, let me explain it to you in very simple terms, okay? The problem with TikTok in the eyes of the American state isn't that it's owned by China. The problem with TikTok in the eyes of the American state is that because it's owned by China, there are way less restrictions on what kind of commentary can be placed on it. Okay, that's definitely a big factor. Another reason why they want to do it is because of profit. They see TikTok as a very profitable social media enterprise. They America comprises like, what, 10% of the entire audience. By the way, 170 million Americans use TikTok, but that's still a... a a, a not a major part of TikTok's revenue streams. 
and they want that revenue stream to be handed off to an American owner. They want TikTok. They want TikTok to be. Uh, they want ByteDance to divest from TikTok. ByteDance being a Chinese company. Okay, it is absolutely ridiculous. If the American government was instead saying we need to get a fucking stranglehold on social media narratives and we need to regulate it somehow, and I don't even know what the best possible way to do that is for the record, but if they were to do that and they wanted to do like Chinese style restrictions on what kind of information gets put on social media, they would already do that for every social media platform, not just specifically try to get TikTok to be sold to an American uh, CEO. Okay? They don't give a fuck about data privacy. They don't give a fuck about what kind of messages are promoted on these platforms, especially because the most of the message that is promoted on these platforms are incredibly fucking reactionary. Okay? They don't give a shit about that. That's the point. I don't know why you think it's like why... Uh, I would I would be on board with this. I don't even like TikTok all that much either, for the record, with the exception of this uh, latest Palestine stuff. Like, it, it did definitely show... Like, I, I was advocating to ban TikTok when Trump was saying that he wanted to ban TikTok. My mind has been changed on this issue. I was. I thought it was fucking bullshit. I thought it was awful. I thought it was like breaking the brains of so many people. And to be honest, to be honest, I still think it's breaking the brains of a lot of people, but it also simultaneously is one of the only outlets. Look at Meta. Look at Instagram versus TikTok on the issue of coverage over Palestinian lives. And you will understand what I mean. Okay. Okay. Gallagher's biggest donor in the past election cycle has been Palantir, the software company literally named after an evil orb used by dark forces to spy on people. Mm. It shouldn't surprise you that Palantir, founded by the notorious Silicon Valley billionaire Peter Thiel, worked with the NSA to create the most comprehensive digital espionage apparatus ever conceived. Palantir was co-created with American spies. One of its earliest investors was the CIA, and the company will not disclose any of its contracts with the government, despite making over a billion dollars from these clandestine partnerships. Forgive me if I'm just a little skeptical about the intentions of this anti-spying bill, given that its main sponsor is funded by the world's largest spying machine. I feel like I need to get out some red string or something. This stuff goes deep. Anyway, back to the Israel lobby. And before we go any further, I think it's important to put a little disclaimer here. There are bad actors online trying to weaponize the rightful criticism of Israel to push an anti-Semitic agenda. I'll put it bluntly. If you are one of those people, you will be banned from my comment section on site. You are not welcome here. You cannot equate Zionism with Judaism. The two have nothing to do with each other, my goal. as evidenced by the horrific treatment of devout Jews at the hands of the fascist Zionist forces. The only reason some people are confused at the distinction is because it's convenient for the Israeli apartheid regime to conflate Zionism with Judaism, and therefore all their propaganda revolves around trying to get people to think that condemnation of Israel is the same as hatred of Jewish people. <clears throat> this will go down in history as some of the most damaging anti-Semitic propaganda ever devised, and we all need to reject it. All right, we all on the same page? Disclaimer over. Second thought has become so incredibly based. No, he was always like this. He was literally always like this. Have you seen the Dong Ha Jing Long TikToks? No, I don't know. Everyone is talking about it though. I wanted to dive into that today. Um, yeah, ByteDance investor response to all of this was what this. What stake do you have in ByteDance? Can you tell us? We, won't, we don't get into the specifics of our investment size, but it's like a pretty material stake. How long ago did you get in? We first invested, I think, two or three years ago and recently bought some more. Okay. And, and this is a company that has an in incredibly rich valuation, if you ask anybody on the street, and just what it's going to be worth. However, what's happening in Washington right now really um, throws this into an entirely <laughs> new worldview, I, yeah. I guess. What, what are you thinking right now? For me, it's funny. From, from a headline number, people would say 200 billion, 250 billion. And the, you know, the company was buying back stock at 270 billion. Well, that that seems crazy. However, what people should remember is 
two years ago, two and a half years ago, ByteDance was worth 200 billion, and Facebook is now, you know, was worth 300 billion. Fast forward to today, ByteDance, you know, Facebook is worth 1.3 trillion or thereabouts. You know, ByteDance is worth 240, 250, 260 billion. Yet the companies are roughly the same size. You know, when one's growing 3x plus faster. Um, yep. ByteDance is just an incredible business. What people in the United States need to also remember, so first, I am not a policy expert, right? Um, but what people need to remember is ByteDance, you know, TikTok US is a very small part of the overall <laughs> business. It is an exciting part of the story for sure, but relative, you know, it's not profitable. And just relative to the overall size, it's a very small part. Okay, so you're looking at what happens in Washington as almost a non issue because even if the U.S. part is, is shut down or, or kicked off and sold, you're looking at ByteDance overall. But let, let's talk about the U.S. Let's talk about the U.S. business, for sure. Because right now Introducing you've got the House Don Juan passing a bill that says you either have to divest or ban it. The Senate just received uh, intelligence briefings this week, and the senators who came out of it said, wow, this is a really concerning situation. So it probably is more likely to get fast-tracked than it was at the beginning of the week. It is going to make a lot of great news headlines for the next many, many months. I think there's a lot of different ways you could see it playing out. Here's the thing, though. The U.S. market is smaller than the Indian market, but if the U.S. bans TikTok, they'll press other countries, too, as well. Yeah, no, they won't. No, the fuck they won't. Because other countries have already, like... The other countries have less to complain about TikTok. You want to know why? The other countries have less to complain about TikTok because they already have regulations implemented in those countries about some of the things that America is using as a complaint against tiktok america has no restrictions whatsoever on data privacy america has no restrictions whatsoever on whatever kind of fucking content flies off the handles on every social media app and it's ironic because those issues those government lack of re uh, restriction uh, it, the, the the lack of restriction that the government promotes has caused these issues on tiktok that it has on every other fucking social media platform except in eu uh, and in other countries where TikTok operates, they already have those regulations. So the politicians can't even fucking uh, point to those problems. That's why I keep saying if America had an issue with like the kind of content that is shown on TikTok or if America had an issue with uh, all this shit, uh, data privacy or whatever, they would actually set standards and restrict data privacy, like to ensure that data privacy exists in the country. But they don't care about that at all. They're just using it as a fucking talking point. All right, let's continue with this. Now let's take a look oh, okay, at okay. how Israel is able to influence this TikTok legislation and why they're so desperate to do it. Here are some quick stats. TikTok has about 103 million active users in the US. More than one in three mobile internet users actively engage with the app. Half of the user base is between the ages of 10 and 29, and half the content creators are between 18 and 24. So you've got a massive user base, which also skews quite young. Now look at this. Pro-Palestinian sentiment vastly, and I really mean vastly, outnumbers pro-Israel content. Yeah. Millions of users, millions of posts, an endless stream of content cataloging and explaining Israel's crimes against humanity. If I'm an Israeli official and I see two whole generations of young people rightly condemning my fascist project, I'm gonna do everything in my power to shut down that platform. But don't just take it from me. Here is some leaked audio from a phone call with ADL Chief Executive Jonathan Greenblatt. Apartheid Defense League. Oh, dude, I you love to see someone that you don't like post your W's in the chat. You know what I mean? Just like hysterically post your W's in the chat while while hyperventilating about it. It's fucking so good. 
God damn, that shit is good. It feels good to be a gangster, baby. It feels good. Not as good as the top of the hour ad break feels when you're subscribed and you don't see it, though. Like that feeling of euphoria that you get at the top of the hour knowing that you're not going to see a three-minute ad break. Oh. So good. Anyway, at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break, of course. Uh, if you no longer want to see those ads, if you want to feel good, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. That's right, baby. Here's the three-minute ad break now. It is young and old. And so we really have a TikTok problem, a Gen Z problem, that our community needs to put the same brain... Mechazom, thank you for the five gifted the subs. The same brain that gave us all these other amazing innovations need to put our energy toward this, like, fast. Because, again, like, we've been chasing this left-right divide. It's the wrong... Again, here we have someone who understands that the next generation will be the determining factor in what the world looks like for the next 50 years. But instead of trying to advocate for positive change or an end to the genocide, the ADL and APAC and the rest of the Israel lobby is trying to shut down the people's ability to access vital information about the state of the world. They are actively trying to hide Israeli war crimes because it makes them look bad. So just in case I haven't been perfectly clear, there is a foreign government meddling in U.S. affairs. But it's not China, it's Israel. This bill was never about China supposedly spying on U.S. citizens. The government doesn't care about that. They haven't even provided any evidence to support their claims. This is just a clear example that the empire is spooked by a media outlet they don't control, they want to force the company to sell so that they can control it, and the process is being expedited because the Israel lobby has enormous sway in our political machinery. Money, corruption, the maintenance of empire. That's all this is. And so there are a few main takeaways from this whole TikTok saga. First, the United States wants to make sure it has a monopoly on collecting and selling our data, as well as a complete control over our media landscape. Second, a genocidal apartheid regime is blatantly meddling in our affairs to prevent people from opposing the genocide. And third, any time the government tells you they can't move quickly on an issue, they are lying through their teeth. From introduction to vote to the president promising to sign the bill in less than a week. They can pass whatever they want. It I don't want to ban TikTok. And I think that we shouldn't be restricting TikTok to promote uh, anti-Palestinian messages more. I thought that was clear. Are you disagreeing with second thought? I, th I might be missing the nuance, but regulating the content instead of banning it would mean starting the conversation in Congress regarding censorship instead of quickly reviving legislation that has been ready to go for several months. I don't think that we are going to arrive at uh, a, a solid solution in the United States of America as it pertains to restricting uh, the free flow of communication on any of these social media platforms. It just so happens that will never be what we want. They'll move quickly for war or to cover for genocide, but they won't protect our children in school. They won't codify reproductive rights. They won't do anything about climate change. This is the bottom line when we're talking about capitalist regimes. The dominance of capital 34 is MKD always 50, they give the 50 big of the ones. time the thing that gets government action. APAC money? Great. Fossil fuel money? Great. Pharmaceutical money? Great. Improving the lives of their people? Walking back from the brink of nuclear war? Stopping a genocide? Not a chance. I always end these videos with a call to action to get organized. Join a socialist organization, build dual power structures and class consciousness. Mass mobilization is the only thing that's worked in the past, and it's the only thing that'll work today. But I also want people to really think about the world we're living in. This isn't me as a YouTuber trying to make a cool video anymore. This is me as a human being living in 2024 with you. What's it going to take to get Americans to open their eyes to the fact that we are living in a- My friends keep telling me this has to do with potential security concerns regarding China's access to US data. What do you think about this? Yeah, it's bull bullshit. It's bullshit. 
They can just buy it off data brokers anyway. What do you mean? Like, what are we talking about? It's more costly for China to like spy on American citizens via TikTok to operate TikTok inside of the U.S. borders than it is to just buy it. It's sold for pennies on the open market. Why the fuck would they have to like, why the fuck would they have to, you know, personally, why, why would they have to personally document it or personally calculate it? Which by the way, it doesn't even matter because the data storage is now being handled in, uh, by Oracle in the United States. So they already, they already fucking uh, dealt with that data privacy concern. Notice how they're not talking about that that much now. While TikTok has become a home for pro Palestinian content, IOF war crime self reports, Meta is looking to de emphasize news content. Exactly. So, like, the data is now also being stored in the United States by American hands. Don't worry. They, they relegated the data, uh, the data storage to an American company after the last time this happened. A violent, decaying empire that does not care whether we live or die. As long as the ruling class can still squeeze out a profit. As someone working in cybersecurity, it's not bullshit and you can't buy the same data they're collecting off brokers, but it is easily prevented without blocking the program. They're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, that's the other thing, other thing, like location data or whatever the fuck, like maybe some other, uh, maybe, maybe some of the other uh, data that you could get specifically without, well, you can buy location data, but uh, so there is, I'm sure there's data that you can get uh, when you, when you manage an app that you otherwise wouldn't be able to purchase, I guess. Right. I, I think the most uh, valuable uh, data on the other hand is just like very easily sold on the marketplace regardless. Um, but the thing is, there's no, there's no restrictions on, on that sort of thing at all for anyone else, for any other social media platform. There's no restrictions on data privacy at all. There's no regulation on data privacy. They will keep this machine churning until the wheels fall off and we're all crushed. I'm asking you as a person now. Please, follow one of the links in the description and join some socialist organization. I don't care which one. Go to some meetings, see what you think, and then come back to the comments here and tell me which one you chose and what projects your chapter is working on. Weeby, you should have a little bit of shame. Demonstrate a little bit of shame and decency in the chat. China shouldn't know how often I watch Brett Cooper TikToks. Jesus Christ, man. That's my man. You are out of control. You're out of control, brother. What the hell's going on? It's crazy. It's madness. Anyway, um, all right. What else are we gonna do today? We're we're doing fun shit. We're I've moved on from uh, I've moved on from the less fun. We be his first of the gulag. Yeah, Brett Cooper is the guy that fingers chicken. Oh, we're gonna do ban appeals in a little bit. Hassan, great news.